Hi friends, it's Deanna here today and today we are making the Believe in Magic uh, dress and this is a woven dress and I am excited. I love working with woven. Um, the really good thing about woven is that you get to work with your mostly your sewing machine. I will do some serging because I just love my serger but if you don't have a serger this is perfect. Um, it's got the cute little straps and some gather bottom um, so it's super super cute and we're gonna sew it together. But before I get started, let me remind you of our fun, fun giveaway of $50 Elia Maggie certificate. And all you have to do is subscribe to our channel and comment below, and then you will be entered for a giveaway. And we do that every month. Um, so go ahead and do that, and then let's sew it together. Once again, I'm doing the Believe in Magic dress from Ellie and Mac, and I already cut out my pattern, um, and I'm ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to grab all these straps and I already did it to some of my straps. I'm going to show you how to do it on one of them and we're going to turn them into like actual binded straps so that they look really, really cute. Um, this is one of my straps. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab it, fold it wrong sides together, wrong sides together to create a memory crease. Then we're going to fold both edges, both raw edges into that middle uh, crease. So we're going to meet them at the middle and steam. Okay. So now we have like a little booklet. <laughs> then we're going to fold right down the middle to put them right on top of each other. Now we encase those straps in. We're going to go ahead and top stitch all the way around the, the both, uh, both sides. When I'm going in my sewing machine, since I'm going to edge stitch, I like to sometimes grab it uh, closer with a pin as I'm pulling it up. So I put a pin at the top and I'm just pulling it. I'm not really pulling it, I'm just kind of guiding it. And if you want to, you can turn so you don't have to pick up the needle. But mine went too far anyway, so I gotta pick it up anyway. And here we go to the next the other side. I'm gonna put that pin right there again. And my pin, I'm not putting it like where, I'm putting it like at the top where the fabric is. I'm not putting it like where my needle is. You gotta be careful that it's not gonna catch your needle. Okay, and we're coming all the way down and closing. So we just top stitched around. I'm gonna clip these threads. They're gonna get sewn in, so I'm gonna clip them and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And I have now all four of my straps are ready. I did the same thing for all of them. Now I'm gonna grab my front sash. This is my front sash. I'm gonna fold it wrong sides together and seam it, okay? And then I'm gonna grab my front bodice and place it on my board. I'm gonna place my uh, uh, folded, um, sash and I put it right on top of my bodice from raj to raj. And if you have a little bit of it hanging out, um, you can trim it, but I don't mine is pretty perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and pin it onto my bodice. I'm gonna top stitch it so it's pinned to my bodice. This is the folded edge up here. This is the raw edge at the bottom. I'm gonna top stitch it one eighth away from the edge at the top and one quarter of an inch at the bottom. So from the bottom edge, I'm gonna go up one quarter of an inch, but from the top, I'm just gonna top stitch one eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on my, on my um, sewing machine and then we'll keep going. All right. So it is sewn, top stitch at the top, one eighth, at the bottom, one fourth. Now I'm gonna put my bodice here on my table and I'm gonna use my strap guide to put it right on top of my uh, uh, front bodice. And I'm gonna grab my straps, I'm gonna place them. I'm gonna start with my uh, shorter strap, which is gonna be my straight strap. I'm gonna put it right sides onto my top where that line is, the dot is. Okay, so there's my one. 
And I'm going to do the same for, use it again on the other side. And I'm going to put it right there. Right sides together. The right side of the strap to the right side of the bodice. Then I'm going to grab my other strap and put it right next to it. If you're going straight, you can just do it straight. If you're kind of tilting, you can kind of turn my strap over so it's kind of like on a sideways slant. And thin it. There's one, still right sides together though. And here's the other. Right next to it, right next door to the other one. And we're gonna go in. So there they are. Now we're gonna go in and top stitch those uh, straps. So top stitching is just a long stitch, I mean basting, basting, base stitching. It's just a long stitch on your sewing machine that makes it so that, oop, I think I ran out of thread. No, I didn't, I don't know why I did that. It's a long stitch that makes it so that my strap doesn't move when I'm gonna sew the other one on, when I'm gonna sew the, the front on. So I'm gonna paste it. Just a long stitch that I can later pull off when I'm ready to, when I've already sewed it in. I can pull it out, take it out of the way once I'm done. All right, so see when I remove my pins, my straps are still on, as you can see, then later I can remove them. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my, uh, here's my straps, they're ready. See, I'm gonna grab my back piece and I put it right on top of my, uh, my, this is my liner. I'm going to put it right on top of my outer and I am going to sew around the top edge. Sew them together and it's a quarter inch allowance. Let me make sure. Yeah, we're just going to sew around the top, all the way around the top. And that's going to catch those straps as well. So we're going to go ahead and sew around the top. Make sure you change it to a regular stitch, not a basting stitch. Pull it back off and redo it. Because I'm not paying attention. Here we go. All right, so now we're gonna, now that we sewed it, we're gonna grab our little snipping scissors and just kind of snip at it um, where it curves you can do it as a couple of times or if you have those scissors that like the shearing scissors i think they're called just make sure that you don't snip your fabric so that way it's kind of good so it can um, turn nicely and it won't have like a bump right there where you know kind of like the fabric folds you don't have a lot of bulk so i'm just trimming right here where just trimming a little bit like little pin tucks where the fabric folds. Then I'm gonna go ahead and fold it, wrong sides together, right side out. And seam. Okay, pull those out straight so that they can be what how they're supposed to be. Make sure you steam them nicely and flat. It wants to tuck in, but I want to pull it out and make it flat right there. That way my strap is straight. I want you to be straight. You're supposed to be that way. There we go. Okay. Now I've got my front bodice finished with my straps hanging right there waiting. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and mark the straps to the back bodice. So we're gonna grab our back bodice. If I can find my back bodice. Mm, 
bag bodice. Okay, I'm gonna grab my back bodice and I'm gonna first find our back, our half. Okay, and here's my back. So I'm gonna just mark it with a little notch. Okay, and I'm gonna open it. And here's my little notch where that half is. I'm gonna put a yellow pin right here. And then from that half, we're gonna move over. Okay, now, if you're doing sizes six months to 40, you're gonna move over one inch, which is what I'm doing. So we're gonna go to the left and to the right one inch. If you're doing sizes uh, uh, five to six, you're going to measure 1.5 inches. So I'm doing the smaller sizes, so I'm just doing one inch. And then I'm going again another inch for the same sizes and an inch and a half for the bigger sizes. So the smaller sizes will be one inch and one inch and the bigger sizes will be one and a half inches to one and a half inches. So that's what it looks like. That's where we're gonna put these other straps. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and position our straps. So here's my back bodice and I'm facing it right down and I am going to baste the straps right onto um, where we put our, our markings. So here's my one, my straight, and then my uh, one that is like uh, crossed over and then my other crossover. And my other straight one. Okay. And you want the crossover ones to be kind of folded in a way that they kind of are sideways. Okay. So there they are. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and baste them on. Sorry, I'm kind of moving them a little bit because I think I kind of moved my pen. Okay, so there they are. We're gonna go ahead and baste them first. And actually, if you wanna baste them, you can, but what we're gonna do next is we're gonna grab our uh, back bodice, uh, our liner, and we're gonna put it right on top to sandwich. So if you don't wanna baste it, you can go ahead and do that, but I am going to baste it and because I know these are gonna try to move. And after I baste it, I'm gonna grab this one and put it right on top and I am going to pin over here at the edge and I'm going to sew it close. Just like we sew that top part close, I'm gonna sew this top edge, this um, edge, yeah, this is gonna be the top edge close with the, with the um, straps uh, sandwiched in there. And actually, let me, maybe I won't baste because I, there are pins, so I'm gonna just move the pins over and maybe I can do it with my pins right there and I'll just pin them on the outside. Mm -hmm. I hope I don't regret it. I always kind of end up regretting it when I don't pin. So that's won't be good if I regret it. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that. See my straps are tucked in there and I'm gonna sew that strap out. So now we're going to go ahead and open it, turn it open and, okay, together, and I'm going to steam it open, I mean right sides, wrong sides together, sorry. So that it's nice and straight here's my back so here it is how cute I'm gonna go ahead and if you, you can go ahead and top stitch one eighth of an inch in the back and then one in, uh, uh yeah one eighth of an inch in the front as well if you want to go ahead and top stitch so it looks nice and cute all right 
So I have top stitched all the way around my bodice front and back. So I have the top top stitched and the front has been top stitched. So now it looks nice and uh, uh, fresh or whatever. I don't know. What am I saying? It looks nice and neat. Uh, I'm going to measure uh, 0.75 inches. So a quarter of an inch down from the top. And you're going to mark it because we're going to be making casings. So I have on my sewing machine, I have already kind of marked. So I'm me measuring from the eighth of an inch seam allowance, seam all the way down a, a three quarters of an inch down. So I'm making like a measuring line. But on my sewing machine, I've made marks that tell me like where I'm sewing to keep me straight. So like I've made like a quarter of an inch is right here, an inch is right here. So I already know where to place my fabric so that it makes a line. Um, and so I sew it in a line and I'm going to go down again a quarter of an inch from that line that I just made. And I'm going to go, I'm going to do that. Uh, we're going to do that one, two, five times, depending on what size you're making. Um, to be to and, and end up one quarter uh end up one inch to an inch and a half from the bottom of the bodice so since i'm making like i think i'm making the smallest size either the smallest or one up from the smallest um look right here i'm gonna measure and now i only have an inch and a half left so i only may i'm only gonna make two rows one two rows and that's where i'm gonna fit my elastic but if your band is wider you're gonna go 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75 until you only have like an inch to an inch and a half left, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew just a straight stitch because I'm gonna feed my elastic through those casings. So I'm gonna sew a straight stitch on those two lines that I had I made. Make sure that you have a mark on your on your sewing machine or somewhere where you can tell. Okay, this is where I am going to stay at. So it's a straight line. Okay. Now that I've sewn those casings, I'm gonna go ahead. I only have two casings because, like I said, I'm making one of the smallest sizes. I'm gonna, but you might have more depending on your size. I'm gonna grab my pin and I'm gonna fit that elastic right through the casing so i'll have two elastics going in through the casings because i have two casings so you'll have you know however many casings you have you'll put the elastic right through there i'm just using a big pin once i get to the edge like once my elastic gets to the edge right here i'm going to go ahead and pin it so it doesn't go all the way through because I gotta pull it all the way through over here. Just, you know, obviously I'm gonna gather it. And I'm gonna pin it over here again. And then I'm gonna do the same for the other elastics. However many you have. I only have two. You know, depending on the size, you'll have more. This is the smallest size, so you won't have less. You'll at least have two or more. Two to five is what it says. Two, two, five. All right. Now I came out both sides and this is what it should look like. Just like so. And I have the two edges right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch so that my elastic, my elastic is cut on my uh, side. So I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch it there so I can catch my and lost to hook so it doesn't come so it doesn't go away and i'm going to catch it on both sides i'm top stitching on both sides to catch that elastic now that we have top stitched the sides of the back and it's ready we're going to make our sashes <clears throat> we're going to grab our this is our side sash so we're going to go ahead and Fold it right sides together and steam. And we're gonna repeat this with both of them, but I'm just doing it with one. We're gonna grab our corner edge and fold it down 
just a memory fold so that we can cut that corner. And then we're gonna go in and sew, starting at the end all the way and down. So we're gonna sew it together, close that up. Just a straight stitch on the sewing machine. I just used my same thread that was on there, so it's pink. It doesn't matter because I'm going to turn it inside out, right side out, I'm sorry. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to turn it right side out. Go through and just kind of turn it like a sock. And then once I turn it all the way, I'm going to show you on my other one because I already turned this one because I know it's going to take a while to turn. We're going to go ahead and steam it straight. Add that... Uh, we're gonna turn it, we're gonna poke out the, the edge, and now we're gonna steam it straight. And then we can go back and go all the way around and top stitch. This down, down the one side edge, down over, and then down all the way around. So we're gonna go ahead and top stitch at one eighth of an inch all the way around. So I went ahead and finished my straps, top stitching my straps, move that out of the way. And I actually top stitched them first with like this pink thread and I thought, oh, maybe I'll contrast, but it was way too bright for the screen and it didn't look good. So I, I took it all off, seam ripped it, and now it's a color that blends in. <clears throat> you didn't need to know all that. I could have, I didn't have to tell you, but I did. Um, it's all part of the creative process. So, okay, now that I've got my straps is fin are finished and they're top stitched all the way around, I'm gonna, this little edge right here, the shorter edge, it's my top. So this is the top of my band and the longer edge is the bottom. So I'm gonna grab my bodice and I'm gonna push the back out of the way. So it's just the front of the bodice right here where uh, my my sash is, my front sash, here's my side. I already did it on this side, so I'm just gonna do this side right here. I'm gonna grab my band, the top is gonna go at the top, so we're matching top and top. And um, I didn't top stitch all the way, so I'm gonna trim this a little bit, and it will be fine because it's just a strap, so it's okay if I eat a little bit of it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right sides together with the bodice, and then I'm gonna grab it right here at the middle, and I'm gonna fold it, make a little cinch right here at the middle, uh, where so that there is a half an inch of seam allowance at the bottom of my uh, at the bottom of my uh, bodice. So I'm gonna show you that in a minute. I cinched it, and I'm gonna show you how that goes. So it's flushed at the top with the top of the band, so that you can see right there. And then at the bottom, there is like there's a half an inch right here hanging out. So I just folded it, kind of cinched it right there and pinned it. And I'm going to go ahead and sew that on, making sure that it's flushed with the top. That's the most important thing. Uh, so that way it matches up. Whoa. And then I want to go back, even though I'm going to go over it when I sew the sides together. So, but I'm just sewing it on. And then when you open it up, it's nice and cute. It's got like a little pleat right there. It's straight. And then it's got enough room right here for when we sew the skirt on, then it won't eat the uh, sash. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and put these sashes kind of, I'm going to, I did the same for the other side. I'm going to put them like right in front and I am going to pin them just right here to get them out of the way for now <clears throat> so I can sew my sides. So what I'm going to do for my sides is I'm going to grab my, I'm laying my front face up. This is my front. I'm going to grab my back and I'm going to put it right on top like so. Okay. And I'm going to grab my, I mean, yeah, this is my back. So it's right side of the back with the right side of the front bodice. And then the back of my bodice. Oh, I, I sh I'm just, should have just pinned the straps to the front bodice. I don't know why I pinned them to both. The my back bodice, my liner bodice is going to come around and it's going to encase sandwich my back bodice in between my outer and liner front bodice okay obviously you got to make sure that my back bodice it's flush at each side so we're gonna make sure that it's uh 
caught right here on each side. And there might be a little bit of extra back bodice at the bottom because of the fact that we have that seam allowance at the top, but you're just sandwiching it together and that is fine because then when you sew it on, you can just cut that, that extra um, little piece off because I had a little bit of extra right here because I didn't quite sew it right, right there in the back, but it will be fine. So now I'm going to put this one right here on the other side and go over with my bodice, making sure that it's poking out enough that when I sew it, it, it doesn't show, like it doesn't get uh, caught. And then I have a gap, you don't want that. So you need to make them both flush together, okay? So all three of them should be like even together in the sandwich. I would worry more about the side seam than I would worry about the bottom. If you have a little bit of fabric left at the bottom, then that's okay. You can always, uh, when you attach the dress, you can eat that little piece off. But on the sides, you want to make sure that it's caught. So the bodice is sandwiched in the middle, the back bodice, in between the liner and the outer of our front bodice. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sew this up here. And I am gonna use my serger for that because there is three layers and I just feel like my serger will be a more secure uh, way of sewing it. If you don't have a serger, you can do a, I would do I sew a straight stitch, but then I would uh, secure the edge with a, a zigzag stitch of some kind to make sure it's nice and secure. So that it doesn't uh, come unraveled later. Okay, and I want to make sure that it's all cut in there. And then I'm going to do the other side. Other side. As well. All right. All right, all right. Now we're turning it. And it should be nice and finished. Okay, here is my bodice. Okay, we can remove this bin so we can really look at it. And there it is. Bodice and the back, how cute is that? All right, so now that we've got our bodice put together, we're gonna put it to the side and we're gonna work on our skirt. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our actual skirt panels and we're gonna sew them together, right sides together, and we're gonna do the same thing for our ruffles, but we'll start with our skirt panels. Right sides together. Don't turn off. At the sides to make it one continuous skirt round. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how uh, we're gonna put the ruffles together as well so we can all do it on one. Sweet, I like to do it all together. So we're gonna do the same thing for the ruffles. That's just an extra piece. We're gonna grab our ruffles and they're all gonna go right sides together. So we'll start with these two ruffles. We'll go right sides together. And then we attach the other ruffle to this one. Next ruffle. And then next ruffle to this one. You're attaching right sides together, the raw edges. And I think there's a fourth ruffle. No, there's one, there was four ruffles. One, two, three, four. And now we're gonna attach them. You grab them, you make sure they're even, and we're gonna attach them together. So I just pinned them, but we're gonna sew them together. You can do um, on your sewing machine or on your serger, whatever you wanna do it, and it'll be one long circle. The one thing I like about doing four ruffles, one, two, three, four, is that then you can divide them into quarters. You can divide your skirt into quarters, and then you will be able to gather this, the width of the quarter, gather the next ruffle, the width of the quarter. So then it, it's easier to, to gather the ruffles because you're going per quarter. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew those sides and then we'll move on. So the side of the skirt and the sides of the ruffles together to make a continuous circle. 
Alright, so everything is sewn together at the raw edges. We've got the skirt. We've got the ruffles. If you want to, you can go ahead and steam up that skirt seam and the other seam. And my skirt probably needs a good ironing because that's the one thing I don't really love about wovens is that they're, they get wrinkly. You know, a knit dress, you kind of just, I mean, I, I'll say some knit will get wrinkly, but for the most part, you know, like it's easy. <clears throat> knit dresses, a lot of, I mean, woven dresses, a lot of times you have to iron them and you're like, eh, do I really want to iron this dress? They're so cute. So then I usually end up saying, yes, I do. I want to iron it because it's cute. Okay, next step, we're gonna go ahead and hem the ruffle. The skirt doesn't need to uh, hem because you're gonna add the ruffle at the bottom. So there's a couple of ways to hem. Um, if you're using knit, um, you can just fold over half an inch with the knit, um, but a woven, it, it, the threads, because it's woven, they can pull. See this little guy right here it can come off and peel. We don't want that. So the way to do hem a woven piece is either you do quarter of an inch up and then another quarter of an inch. So it's a double fold, quarter inch double fold, that's half an inch. Or you can go around with your serger or a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine at the edge of the seam, at the edge of the raw edge. And then you'll have like the rawness, I mean the serge edge, and then you fold it up and sew it together. I like, I personally like the look of the fold over, fold over better because I feel like it gives it more of a finished look than the uh, serge and then fold over look. Um, but it takes also more time. So it all depends on what look you want to go for. I am going to go, I am going to go ahead and sew the ruffle, uh, sew the raw edge and then um, uh, sew it because it's just quicker and I don't think it makes that big of a difference. I do, Like I said, I prefer the other look. So if I was going to sell this dress, I would probably do fold over, fold over. But since this is for my little knees and um, I don't think it really makes a whole lot of difference, I'm not gonna give myself extra time, extra work. So we're gonna go with the uh, raw edge and I'll show you, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you what that looks like. So I would do is, is sew the, the seam allowance. So, uh, right at the edge. I wouldn't even do a seam allowance. I would just sew it right at the edge and then fold over that seam, that hem, that, uh, uh, that uh, search edge. I would fold it under and then I would sew it right on top, top stitch it with my um, sewing machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then um, we'll be ready to uh, Attach a ruffle. Hmm. Ruffle and attach a ruffle. All right. Oh, so see how you see the serge edge right there and then I top stitched it with a straight stitch. So I mean, it looks really flushed and really cute. Um, and so that's ready. Trim some of these uh, fuzzy hairs. Okay, so now it is time to ruffle our ruffle hmm, gather a ruffle and then attach it to our skirt i'm gonna go ahead and and um quarter my skirt that way i know exactly where each ruffle is gonna go um these are my two side seams i'm meeting them together and i'm going to each side one side and the other side this is going to be a vintage dress because this fabric is older vintage fabric and so i love it um, I love the look of it. I think it's going to look super, super cute. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, I've seen people work with like um, vintage sheets, like cute little, um, and I would love to do that. I need to find a place where, and, and buy some really cute vintage sheets, but I haven't found any really cute ones. I've seen people online find them. I don't know where they find them, but I haven't found any, unfortunately. So I'm stuck with just a regular uh, uh, old fabric. Anyway, <clears throat> um, 
curtain fabric. I'm just kidding, it's not. So, um, but it is pretty cool. I love it when people upcycle uh, from their fabrics or from whatever it is that they can use. And I've done that before. I think that's some of my favorite sews because I feel like you're repurposing something super, super cool. So I love that. But anyway, so <clears throat> how uh, there are different ways of gathering. Um, you can do gathering stitch on your serger, which is you go all the way around just like I did already with my serger around the edge. And you leave a spot where you don't finish it off. So you kind of end and end, you know, and then you can grab your thread, not your loopers, but the thread that goes straight. You can pull one of those out or both if you want. And then um, as you pull it, you can gather the skirt. And there's a better way. Uh, um, uh, I show it better at in the uh, play date uh, video. So if you want to look that up and see what kind of that kind of gathering, that, that's super easy as well. Uh, but sometimes I like to just do a straight stitch on my sewing machine. I just feel like it's super easy. A long straight stitch. It's like a basting stitch. Sometimes I do two rows. Sometimes I do one row. Today I'm just going to do one row. And I just start and I just go. And, some, and I give it a little bit of tension on my to my uh, thread. And it helps me to go ahead and gather it. So it kind of gathers it for me a little bit. And then I just have to go ahead and finish it. So I have to make sure that I give the exact, exact same tension to um, tension amount to the whole thing um, so that it's even ruffles. But um, so if you can set your change your tension, you might you could do that. I don't know. Some somebody might be yelling at me, don't do that to your sewing machine, it's probably not very good. Um, I don't know. I haven't had any issues with it. And it works really great. So I'm gonna go all the way around the whole ruffle. And when I get back to the spot where I started, I kind of gonna overlap, just go a little bit longer. Then I'm not gonna cut my thread. I'm just gonna pull it out. So I have a long tail where I can go ahead and gather even more if I need to. But look at this, how awesome. It pretty much ended up the same width as my skirt so no need to gather anymore just kind of fix the gathers right here at the back where i um, started and then i usually like to go ahead and tie those the start and the end so that way my ruffles don't want to come ungathered when i'm trying to sew them on but see it ended up the width of my skirt so that was perfection now what i'm going to do is i'm going to match the <clears throat> my seams to all my quarter points that I made. So I made a quarter point right here. Well, I didn't make it, but it was already there where my seam is. So that's one. Then I'm gonna go over to my next quarter point that I marked, and that's gonna be where my seam is, right here. And I'm putting it right sides together. So the right side of the ruffle with the right side of the skirt. The next one. And then the last one. Where are you? Here it is. And I like to like do a little notch, but you can just put a pin there to mark it. That will be just fine. So now that it's all pinned, I'm gonna go ahead and make and pin it a little bit more so that my ruffles are pinned nicely to my skirt. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sew the ruffles on. I always sew with my ruffles face up so I can see the ruffles as I'm sewing them. And I can make sure that they're going on evenly because sometimes the ruffles will try to like move sideways and kind of scrunch over to the side. And you're like, no, you're not doing that to me. You know, so that they're kind of even everywhere. And so I'm just pinning. <clears throat> I'm just pinning all the way around the whole skirt. Pinning, pinning, pinning. You can put as many pins as you want. You can use clips if you want. You don't have to use pins. I just, uh, I just have happen to have a ton of pins, so that's why I use pins. But eventually, when my pins all die, I will get some uh, clips. I want clips. I should like you know if we ever do like a secret Santa, I should ask for um, clips. 
but I never think about it until I'm sewing and I get pinned. I get poked by a pin and I'm like, hmm, maybe clips would be a little bit better. All right, so let me finish up pinning this skirt all the way around. And then we're going to go ahead and attach this ruffle to the skirt. And how we're attaching it is we're just going to uh, either serger, if you have a serger and you wanna serge it on, or you can do a uh, stretch stitch. And then I would always finish your edges, your raw edges, because you don't want it to unravel. So I would either do uh, some kind of uh, uh, like stretch stitch, you know, like a lightning bolt stitch or something like that at the edge, kind of closer to the edge to finish it up, to finish up that raw edge. This is up to you. But now that they're pinned, I'm gonna go ahead and sew them. And I am going to use my serger so that way I think it's a little bit less work than having to come back in and top stitch it. I mean, um, not top stitch it. Cause I will, I will top stitch it. I mean, having to come back in and, and um, fix the raw edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and do that. And as I'm doing that, I'm fixing these ruffles, making sure that they're nice and even. So let me go sew all the way around and we are almost done. All right, so now we are finished ruffling. Make sure you look and all your ruffles are cut. All right, looking good so far. And then we're gonna come back over here at the beginning and take off the, because remember I told you I tied it together. You're going to pull that stitch off and sometimes it slides nicely and sometimes it wants to fight you. It was sliding nicely and then it came off. You just pull that basting stitch off. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my ruffle and I am going to, sorry, there's more basting stitch. I'm gonna grab my ruffle and I'm gonna steam that seam. You can either make it steam up or down. It's up to you wherever you want it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch, right edge stitch, right at the edge, one eighth of an inch away from the uh, bottom to like set that seam down. You can go ahead and top stitch right there all the way around. So I'll do that in a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead and move on so that we can do the rest. We can go ahead and do the rest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my bodice, <clears throat> put it right here, okay? And I am going to gather my skirt, the width, of the bodice okay so i'm gonna gather go ahead and do the same thing that i did for my uh <clears throat> ruffle i'm gonna do it to the width of my bodice so i'm gonna use my uh but oh you know what before i do i'm gonna go ahead and and quarter my skirt because that just helps me to make sure that my gathers are nice and even so i quarter my skirt then i can quarter my bodice as well so meet those two side seams and then go back to the back. I'm stretching this out so that I have, I, I want it to be even. So I stretched out the back and then I'm going to the front and we are literally almost done. So let me go ahead and gather this, the width of this of the bodice and then we'll attach it and top stitch it and we'll be done. <clears throat> so now my skirt is gathered and I think it's gonna have to be gathered a little bit more than that <clears throat> so I'm gonna grab it over here in the back and gather a little bit to the front to that front half and then oops and then gather a little bit to the back half if I can find the beginning of my thread yes Okay, and now I'm gonna measure and it's pretty perfect. See, I, sometimes we get so scared of gathering, but it really isn't that scary. It really is just a little bit time consuming sometimes when you have to gather a whole lot, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. And when it's, um, I actually 
prefer it when it's really nice and gathered because I feel like you can gauge it better. When it's just a little bit of ruffle, like when it's barely gathered, you're like, is it even? Is it not even? But when it's like really, really gathered, you're like, oh, it looks pretty good. All right. So now what we're going to do is either you can put the bodice right over on top, but I'm going to put the skirt right over the bodice because of the fact that the bodice is a little bit scrunched. So I'm going to have to kind of pull it, stretch it out a little bit. So the right side of my bodice is touching the right side of my dress. And I'm going to match up first those side seams. And make sure when you're going to sew that you pin those uh, um, straps out of the way. You don't want to get them cut. Now I'm going to look for my middle. Here it is my quarter point that I marked. And now I'm gonna go to the other side seam, right sides together, remember that. And I'm gonna pin it. And then my front. Find my little area right here, right here, and pin. awesomeness now if you want to go ahead and pin a little bit more i'm gonna put like one pin in between each two pins you know what i mean jelly bean and then we're gonna go ahead and sew just like we did with our ruffle and make sure like i said earlier if you had a little bit of fabric like hanging down make sure you account for that when you sew it on so like I had a little bit of edge right here make sure that's hanging out so that you sew this bottom edge too don't just sew up here and then you have nothing attached down here you gotta sew over that um so I'm gonna go ahead right sides together the bodice and the skirt I'm gonna go ahead and sew all the way around I'm using my serger for that step as well make sure that as you were sewing you made sure you pulled everything out of the way because the only things that should have been catching is your um dress not you did not want to catch any of your bottom of the dress you just want to catch the side and make sure that you go back and check that it's all in all the ruffles cutting right there where i tied it and then we can pull off that basting stitch and we are done with our dress except for hold on Ooh. sorry i knocked you you okay you okay all right basting stitch off okay so then you can go ahead and turn it inside out and steam that seam right there. This seam, the inside seam, steam it up towards the bodice. Okay, steam the seam up towards the bodice and then turn it back around and top stitch that right there top, top stitch the uh band at an eighth seam allowance eighth of an inch seam allowance right there so you have top stitch at the top top stitch at the bottom and catch that seam behind it and we are done i just have to top stitch those two top stitch the bodice right there and then top stitch the uh um the ruffle at the bottom finish pulling all my basting stitch and I am done with my dress. How cute is this little thing? I love it. Super cute. Super sweet. And actually not super hard. There's my back. I gotta fix that bow, but there is the, I love the rouging on the back and I love how it looks. It looks super sweet. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. 
I hope you had fun. Please let me know if you have any questions about anything that I did um, or didn't do. Um, please come and like, share. Come check us out on Facebook and Instagram. If you have any questions, please post. I know this will lay down nicer once I top stitch it. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, subscribe to our channel for your chance to win uh, your $50 early Mac gift certificate. I hope you have a good rest of your day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.